Yeah, yeah, it goes down now, lucky two minutes to open up the show. Uh, Mums and dads, you've got little children there, they've got a couple of uh, jets about to take off, quite noisy. Uh, on the roll out, they might want to get some airplugs or just keep an eye on them before they uh, get a pass your... It may not be the most modern jets in the world, first um developed back in the 1940s, but they certainly are slick pieces of machinery. We'll see more of the vampires later on in the show, and the jets keep going in this afternoon's program. There's a um, guy to get themselves dirty by Jet for New Zealand. And behind him is uh, Brett Emily, well-known local airport, and uh, Warbirds pilot. Let's give him a big hand, Monica, as they uh, touch down and roll on through. Our opening flyby and uh, for Easter. 2016 this Easter Sunday. We can operate in a tactical situation. Now the aircraft is taking off uh, for a test so it's speeding up at 150 knots in order to avoid. So these aircraft uh, can carry 44 passengers and uh, get uh, about 20 parachute. In uh, New Caledonia, we operate it uh, for uh, all the Pacific region. So we also work a lot with the two Casas, which are based in Tahiti as well. And how many pallets of champagne can you fit in the Casa? Around five tons. It depends on it depends on the few. Oh, we're actually live. We shouldn't have, shouldn't have said that, should we? So 180 horsepower here, they weigh nothing, and he's off. Look at that. And he's knocked off four metres, 31 metres, ladies and gentlemen. Did 38 earlier. This is an amazing little aircraft, this, folks. He's off. 29 metres. Right, it's incredible. It's knocked off nine metres. Close to 165 down to the ice recently. And here we see uh, Freddie with that wheelbarrow pass. He's got his flaps out for that full land, so that's where you get that nose down attitude. And you can see the loadmasters waving out the paratroop doors. Those paratroop doors, obviously used for uh, to a 42,000 pounds uh, light armoured vehicle. door open and the uh, loadmaster's waving to you. Hopefully they're uh, attached to something in there so they don't fall out. My Camaro, which is one of them. And Freddie's just touched it down, he's got the engines in full reverse. Alright, we should get airborne about sort of close to crowds, you know, maybe just after. He's going to demonstrate a tactical departure, so he's going to try and keep the aircraft as low as he can for as long as he can. And then he's going to do a zoom climb all the way up again.
in the RNZF's ability to train is that we also have a full motion simulator on the ground at Ohakia, which our pilots can use 24 hours a day, all the time. There we go. Pick your cat up, swing it around. I wonder how that feels from the flight deck. I was just wondering how it felt for the loadmaster and the crewman because he's sort of hanging on. You can see there. Slightly balanced a bit of a first in the doors. There's Gilly in the doors, yep. Amazing display, wonderful helicopter, state of the art, all brand new. It is. We are so lucky to have these um, boys and girls. If you're thinking about a career in the military, you can go, you know, do a lot worse than that. Have a look out the front. So this is a pedal turn, a little bit of uh, side to side. There we go. Get a few more waves out of it. And uh, the last one we're going to do is a little bow to the crowd. So we'll say thank you very much. The Augusta 109 from Three Squadron, based at RNZ Air Fahakia. There we go. <laughs> very nice. And he'll do an over-the-shoulder rollout, and I do believe that Mike probably couldn't finish his display without another quick pass along the crowd line, so we'll see. Okay, so the second quiz question, boys and girls, before I sign off, because that is bringing us to the end of the RNZF section today, is what shark found in the New Zealand waters is the RNZF's A109 named after? What shark is the A109 named after? saw this thing coming up behind, magnificent aircraft, beautiful aircraft to fly according to John, a little bit different than the Spitfire, more about that shortly. The size of this aircraft. As it's approaching inbound, it's accelerating to approximately 250 knots and will bank out nicely to the right towards the mountains for an epic shot with that beautiful backdrop. extensive combat and humanitarian experience. At the controls today is Captain Tony Murhar. Joining her are Majors Joshua Reem and Jesse Miller. Now approaching from your left, the aircraft will perform a slow speed pass. During the pass, please notice the wing's leading edge flaps and large power lift flaps. These design features literally change the shape of the wing and are the key to its slow final approach speed enabling this remarkable aircraft to land and stop in very short distances required at austere dirt airstrips. Ladies and gentlemen, please get your cameras ready as this will be the best opportunity to capture the experience of this amazing state-of-the-art aircraft as it passes by at slow speed.
Let's give a big wave, Wanaka, to our friends from the United States Air Force as well as they come on round. Under the command of Captain Tony Murha. Also, her husband and one-year-old son are in the crowd today to watch mom fly the amazing C-17. C-17 is now executing a maximum climb. And again, this demonstrates the ability of the C-17 to evacuate the small arms threat in remote airfields. A big hand for the Royal Australian Air Force. <laughs> Locked onto the tail of the 109, a scenario would have seen many times over the skies of southern England and the English Channel during World War II. And the other way around. People, the Spitfire with the beautiful liftable swept wing at the back of the Mission Spitfire 109 with the slippery thinner wing, which gave it a lot of speed. But the Spitfire had the ease when it came to tight turning in combat uh, situations, clearly displayed as they profile the aircraft here. Three for another run. Probable. So this is pretty significant history, folks, from a New Zealand point of view. Just a final slip of uh, out there, decorated DFC and bar, DSO. Here at the South Based, RNZ, RNZ the F Base in our heart here.
anywhere in the world. Just a quick uh, interlude, folks. I've got the founding father of War Birds over Wanaka, so Tim Wallace would be sitting front row here, side. Tim, it's great to have you with us. How do you enjoy the show today? What a great man, but for you. I got the whole thing. I especially that John remain bringing the blue shot. The ME 109, because bringing it to England. by Brett Emini, the very man who led the refurbishment of this beautiful old ship in New Plymouth over the last four years. Uh, so that's a part of the, uh, the aerodynamics of the aeroplane, the wingtips, when you see them coming down there. These are much bigger than what you think. They look quite small relative to the size of the aeroplane, but there are the floats deployed now. And this is what gives the aeroplane its stability as it lands on the water. And look at the shape of the hull. It's like a boat from the 1930s. But these aeroplanes can hold their, their time in the sky for up to 28 hours in World War II. Wow. I knew an old pilot in Auckland called Johnny Johnson, and that's the duration he had his aircraft aloft, 28 hours, looking for airmen had been shot down in dogfights over the Pacific Ocean against the Japanese. When they found them floating around their little wee life rafts, they'd land on the water, pick them up, and take them back to base. Some uh, fire bombers as well. Lancaster, the P-40 Warhawk, the Avalon Mosquito, and the Mustang. The one of the, uh, the Mustang was commissioned by the British. Uh, it was a reconnaissance aircraft. Originally had the Allison B-12 718 engine, which is around the 1200 horsepower. It needed a bit more grunt.
240. Vessel is needed. Apologies. Steve Goldspeak, another P40 from Fortune Squadron. With a good story from a mighty force here. And squadron leader, a Annihilated on the other side here by the Americans to take the airfield back as the P-40 comes through. Corsair come around for another run. G1D Corsair. Well, a couple of things about the pilots. And the vampires, first of all, Brad Emity, he actually bought this aircraft in 1995 and test flew it in the Swiss Alps. It used to belong to the, the Swiss Air Force, immaculately presented aeroplane, low time airframe. And the other one is XRAAF, flown by Paul Hewitt. And when the Curry family owned this aircraft, brought it back to the school. You left your cell phone and driver's license. In the VBAT situation. From the left, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look out, we've got a 
bombing run here. Look, bombs are nice. Bombs falling. People straight ahead of you. Look for it. We are under attack. The Anson. The naughty Anson. Lean her up, Dave. Lean her up. She's running a bit rich. She's not being rich. Another run from the from the enemy folks in come the, the puffins again as my wife would call them. Naughty T6s. The Anson might have wiped out some of the enemy uh, stores across the road there and has taken some bits from the enemy, so he's gone down in the weeds again. The enemy continue to attack. We've got fighters in the sky, so hopefully we'll see some contrail shortly when some of these enemy aircraft get taken out. Yes, I'm sure there's some competition lying just around here somewhere that won't be too far away. A bit of a free range at the moment. They're onto it. Here we come. Here come our fighters. The allies are here. Through the smoke we go.
the strafing run ground. There's two left. We've got to get rid that's of That's one now. I think this one's John, eh? Oh, yeah, one's one's hit. Second one, yeah, looking too healthy. Jeez. Got the wobbles, the other one's smoking as well. Smoke and Joe, we call them, they're all gone. The fighters have left the scene, people, because they're happy with the result. Them, all gone, us, nil. I like it, it's pretty good and it wasn't rigged. <laughs> it was a real deal, it was a real fight.